This video is about Möbius transformations, and they are transformations of the form shown on the screen here. You will notice that it has a numerator and a denominator. They're essentially fractional linear transformations. because it's a fraction of two linear transformations, but they're very different. I'm going to caveat right away that this video is not going to tell you everything there is to know about these. There are lots of things to learn about Mobius transformations, and I'm just going to hit on some of the most basic things. You will notice this condition AD minus BC not equal to zero looks a bit like a determinant, and indeed it is. Mobius transformations are very much like uh, matrix equations. So there's, there, there's, some, there, there's a lot of structure here. Now, the thing to, to realize is that they are linear transformations, are kind of Mobius transformation, where C is equal to 0. So C equals 0 gives you a linear transformation or rather an affine transformation. And linear if b is equal to 0 as well. On the other hand, if a is equal to 0 and d is equal to 0. These guys work like f of z is equal to a constant over z, which I have a video for. If you haven't seen the video on linear transformations or the video on f of z is equal to 1 over z, please do that now because Mobius transformations generalize both of these and have properties of both of these. And it's important to understand those properties first in the simpler cases so that you can understand this more general case. Okay, now in order to really understand what Mobius transformations do, you will notice that they have one zero, that's when the numerator is zero, and one pole, that's where the denominator is zero. So one zero, that's where a z plus b is equal to zero. And of course, that's where z is equal to negative b over a. And one pole, that's where c z plus d is equal to zero. Of course, z is equal to negative d over c in that case. Okay. There's another useful thing to think about, and the useful thing to think about is that since they have a pole, we should be thinking not about the complex plane, but about the Riemann sphere. So, what does that mean? Well, remember what the Riemann sphere is. It's a representation of the complex numbers. Z equals 0 is here. And we add the point at infinity as the north pole. And this guy here, this is absolute value of z is equal to 1, the equator. Now what the Mobius transformation does is it takes this Riemann sphere and maps it back onto itself. And what it does in particular is it gives you a new zero and a new pole. The pole, of course, is where z is equal to infinity, or rather, the pole is where w is equal to infinity, and the zero is where w is equal to 0. So instead of thinking about it in terms of a self-map, which it is, let's think about it in terms of 
this transformation, taking z to w okay so when when i map to the zero i.e. the zero is right here, when z is equal to negative b over a, f of z is equal to 0. So wherever that is, that's the 0. That point gets mapped to the south pole. Now the other guy, the pole, when z is equal to negative d over c, that gets mapped to the point at infinity, wherever that is. That gets mapped to there. And the point is, all the other points go along for the ride. Now, in order to see this, in order to see this, it's useful to figure out, well, how many degrees of freedom do I have? degrees of freedom do I have? Well, I have A, B, C, and D, right? We have A, B, C, and D. That's four complex numbers. Knowing the pole and the zero, that's two complex numbers. We get one more number, and that would give us three. And that would seem to be not quite enough. However, there is plus one constraint. that the AD minus BC is not equal to zero. So in the end, you, you really do need, we really do need some information about this. You really do need your, your four complex numbers. However, not every such choice will work because if AD minus BC is not equal to zero, then you run into problems. Now, in order to kind of see that this picture makes sense, it's useful to do a calculation. And this calculation is kind of best seen backwards. And the calculation is that if I write AZ plus B over CZ plus D, that's actually equal to, and this is what I'll show, it's actually equal to this expression. And assuming C is not equal to zero, now, you might say, gosh, what is this? Well, if you look at it, this is actually the composition of a bunch of maps going on here. This is a shift. This is, a, this is all a constant. And this is a composition of a linear map. with 1 over z. What you'll notice is all of these guys here have the property that, like 1 over z, they preserve circles and lines. Not saying that they make all circles into all circles, but circles and lines might switch. But if you start out with a circle or a line, you end up with a circle or a line.
And that, that justifies this picture here of working with the Riemann sphere. Okay, let's, let's see how that calculation works. And it's best actually to work backwards, starting from the right side and going towards the left. And really, the thing to do is just try to put everyone on the common denominator. Okay, it's a little messy, but it's not so bad. Okay. Expanding out the numerator a bit. Notice there's a cancellation. And with that cancellation, I now have a common factor of C everywhere in my numerator. Great. Point of the matter is, of course, I needed in order to write this down, c not equal to 0. Now, if we think about what does c not equal to 0 mean, it means that I don't have a linear transformation. If I have a linear transformation, then in particular, this interpretation here means that I don't have any of the 1 over z behavior. OK, so what this means is that, that Mobius transformations take circles and lines and switch them around a bit, but don't turn them into any other kind of curves. So it's really like manipulating the Riemann sphere. You're, you have a one pole and one zero. Those are points that end up on the north and south pole of the image, the W side of things. And well, as I said, there's lots more to learn. And I have another video that will tell you about how to find Mobius transformations, giving some information. So really exploring this degrees of freedom question in a nice way.